Hey fam, what's going on? I'm Dragon Mythic. And I'm Ripcord, and together we make up Ginger and a Beard. And on this video today, we're going to take a deeper look into the elf race of Lineage to Revolution. Yeah, we're going to take a close look. We're going to look at all the different perks that come with playing the elf class and each of the individual subclasses. So let's jump right in. All right, guys, let's jump into the elf subclasses. As I mentioned before, Ripcord not feeling very good, so I'm flying solo, trying to get these videos out to you as fast as possible so you guys know exactly what to expect when playing the elf race. So let's look at the warrior subclasses. First off, we have the Temple Knight. So this is your tank char character. Going to be rocking that heavy armor, sword and shield all the good prototypical tank stuff and lack of armor obviously because you know what kind of tank needs armor that's that's just crazy taking a look at the first ability tribunal a broad swing to deal damage knock down enemies and provoke them to attack you so we've got a knockdown and a taunt all wrapped up in one which is awesome Next up is Eva's Grace. Creates a holy area on the ground that deals damage over time to enemies within the area and decreases their HP regen. So that feels like a, a PvP ability. I'm not sure how much uh, regular mobs will have HP regen, but doing the, the dot is definitely good. So you have a, an area where people are just getting attacked. And then finally we have the Aegis Stance become invulnerable to damage and debuff for a short period of time and increases your speed. Now this is the the bread and butter of the Temple Knight. That would be the reason why I would roll Temple Knight is simply for that bubble, that moment of just pure tank, can't take me down, I'm gonna hold whatever point that I need to in a PvP, gonna be able to tank out some big hits from PvE bosses, anything like that. Moving on to the Sword Singer, this is our melee AoE DPS style character. Just goes in, swords ablazing, dual swords, or the good old spear, also rocking heavy armor, or lack thereof, again. <laughs> uh, looking at the first ability, Sonic Blaster fires the sword aura forward to deal damage to distant enemies and decrease speed. So you have a little bit of crowd control here and it can deal damage to distant enemies so that's nice for a melee hero to be able to deal damage to those ranged characters. Sonic Storm fires sword aura that ultimately explodes, damages, and knocks down enemies so we got more crowd control, more ranged abilities, and with the knockdown you'll be able to close that gap with the high mobility of the elf class. We have Rhythm of Combat. Combat, excuse me, increases attack and defense of you and your party members. There is definitely a grammar error there. But uh, yeah, good to have increased attack and defense and it applies to all your party members. So good utility buff there. Finally, we have Song of Hunter increases crit rate and critical damage for you and your party members. Now, I feel like it's important to mention at this point that you can only have three main abilities active at any time, so you're going to have to choose between these last two buff abilities, whichever you think is better, or maybe if you have two of the Sword Singers, you'll decide to both pick one or the other, and that way you get both buffs. Alright, into the Rogue class. First off is the Planeswalker, we'll be rocking the light armor, a little bit more clothed than the tanks were, that's for sure, and uh, using the dagger. So this is your prototypical rogue class, you know, cloak and dagger, all that good jazz. Looking at the first ability, triple splinter rapidly attacks forward three times, dealing massive damage and decreasing defense, attack, speed, and speed of affected enemies. Alright, all the abbreviations are thrown in. So it's decreasing attack speed which is huge that 
downs their damage output, right? If they're attacking slower, and it downs their defense, so you're doing more damage, and it downs their speed, so they can't get away. Which all awesome when you are a, a melee DPS focused at doing as much damage as you can. You can follow that up with a Blade Hurricane launches a flurry of attacks forward that damages enemies in the area consecutive times. So yeah, definitely doing a lot more burst damage here. Looking flashy while you do it. Your AoE ability. And finally, Planeswalk. Greatly increases attack speed and speed also increases HP drain rate during the duration. So stealing health. You're doing more damage by attacking faster, and you can run people down faster. So, a very good buff. This is only a self buff, but that's alright if you're a rogue. All about the rogues, the rogue life, what you want to do. Moving on to the bow wielding rogue subclass, the Silver Ranger here. One thing I wanted to note before we get started is they have a high crit rate, but uh, they're kind of squishy, so you'll need to learn how to kite out really well stay alive jumping into the abilities though lethal shot fires a sharp penetrating arrow to deal damage and stun enemies got some good crowd control here right off the bat double wide shot fires two arrows shaped fires two arrow shaped energies bolts dealing damage to the enemy as they penetrate and decreases the defense so that's that's nice once i got past the uh <laughs> the wording so it's gonna lower defense allowing you and your team to do more damage to your enemies not really uh slowing anybody down or crowd control but it's still uh i think you can hit multiple heroes if i understand correctly if they penetrate and keep going through all right here we go mind's eye this is what i was talking about earlier the crit rate is greatly increased with this buff and then again, you're going to have to choose between greatly increased crit rate or increased attack speed and speed. So I guess if you're trying to get away, maybe uh, you want to run the double quick step, though I would probably stick with the Mind's Eye since elves are a very, or the fastest race in Lineage 2 right now anyways. And it doesn't make sense to have double quick step. Anyways, that is the Silver Ranger. Gonna be using the range to her advantage and then trying not to get hit by anybody. Finally, moving on into the Mystic class for the Elves. First off, we have the Spellsinger. It is the Mage. We'll be rocking the Super Light Armor. Some. I'm not sure what the heck this is back here. But a staff as well, as uh, all mages do. Can't be a mage without a staff. Using some ice magic here. Ice Spear launches an ice spear in front to deal powerful damage and slow affected enemies. So we've got crowd control here. Got a directional slow, which can be good. Wouldn't be that great if you're getting surrounded. But if you are surrounded, you can use your blizzard, which summons a snow snowstorm around yourself that attacks the area and deals damage. Affected enemies will be slowed and stunned. So I'm assuming they get stunned first and then slowed, so you can get away, kite them out, and use your ranged attacks to your advantage. All right, moving on to the elder subclass, the healing subclass of the elf race. Obviously, we're going to be using a staff and cloth armor, just what healers do. Can't be running around in heavy plate, because that would be weird. Holy Paladin, those guys are totally weird. I never played a Holy Paladin for five years. No, no I wouldn't do that. Anyways, <laughs> um, this is one of the classes that I'm looking at playing, just because I do enjoy healing and playing that utility role, that utility support role. And this is probably the strongest PvE healer in the game right now. Let's jump in and take a look at her abilities real quick. We have Holy Fire that damages enemies and affected enemies take increased damage. So not only are you healing, you're increasing the DPS of your party as well. That's really strong. Next up is the Restoration, your healing ability. 
heal you and your party members around you continuously. So what that means is it's a heal over time. It's not going to be a burst heal right away like the bishop subclass of the human race. Now you got to wait a few seconds before you feel the full effect of this ability. So you got to keep that in mind. Next up is the mental refresh buff. I don't know if you would call it a buff, but uh, this is one of the reasons why she is probably the best healer. I, it's hard to say just because PvP is such a big element to, to fend off the, the burst healing bishop, but decreasing skill cooldowns and removing debuffs is huge. No, uh, no other class can reduce the skill cooldown, and there's no way to reduce your cooldowns in the game right now. So, that is a huge ability to have on hand, or you can you know, instead use the follow defense, which increases the defense of you and your party members. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't pick the follow defense, guys. Take the mental free refresh. Help your teammates out. Anyways, guys, that's going to finish up this guide to the elf subclass. I'm really excited about the elf class just because one. I like to play female characters and two have a really strong healer so i may end up running uh, the elder i may not but let us know what you're gonna end up running in the comments below and if you want to find out about any of the other races we do have videos up for those as well so just go ahead and look those up and we will be breaking down all of the classes now that'll do it for today be sure to like comment and subscribe and we appreciate your views guys we'll catch you next time thank you thank you thank you hero 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 i want to be a hero hero